Andrew Tate, How He Abused Part 2. Hello. I'm H.G. Tudor, continuing an analysis of a Vice World News investigation and article with regard to Andrew Tate to help you understand more about his behaviours and that of an upper lesser type B. Amelia, one of his victims, said that for a very long time she was in denial about the alleged rape, feeling that acknowledging it had happened would negatively define her. To this day, she struggles to even use what she refers to as the R word. It was like, if this R word is what happened to me, then that's what I am, she said. She continued to see him for a number of months afterwards. Of course, that demonstrates the lack of understanding of what she's dealing with, and quite likely the presence of emotional thinking that's causing her to continue to spend time with an abuser. She continued having consensual sex with him. This was partly, she said, to buttress her denial response to the alleged assault at the time. If I go and see him again and I want it this time, then I'm not being degraded, then it's not the R word, she said, explaining her thought process. So that's what I did. I was like, right, I'll see you again. You haven't taken that control of me. You haven't hurt me. This, in effect, of course, is emotional thinking. Because whilst on the face of it, it appears logical that what she's trying to do is to say, you've not got control of me, so I'm going to sleep with you again. It creates a number of problems. It's continuing to cause her to interact with a narcissist and an abuser, meaning that there's a risk that she could be abused again. It continues to heighten her emotional thinking. It also could damage her credibility with regard to any potential criminal prosecution that would come about by demonstrating that she continued to sleep with her abuser. Whilst, of course, one would argue that that ought not to matter, it is something that is taken into account by a jury when trying to determine who's telling the truth. Accordingly, this is a demonstration of how a victim of a narcissist conducts themselves in a way that they think is logical, trying to prevent him from having control over her, to try and say, you haven't hurt me, rather than acknowledging what has actually happened and doing the most logical thing, which is to stay away from him. Once you know, you go. You get out and you stay out. Fiona Vera Gray, Deputy Director of London Metropolitan University Child and Women Abuse Studies Unit, said Amelia's actions in the aftermath of the alleged rape were not an uncommon response. The social construction of a woman who has been raped is of someone who is weak, who is stupid, who cannot protect herself, and that she is damaged goods. No one wants to identify with that, she said. So it makes absolute sense to me, and I'm sure to anybody, why you would do that. Do what you can to try and reclaim a sense of agency over that narrative. It sounds like that's what she's tried to do before she's got to a point where she was like, actually, there is no other way to understand this because I've been violated. Emilia said she eventually broke things off with Tate after he invited her to go away together for a weekend for the first time. Bribery. That was when I woke up and realised if I spent a whole weekend with him, I might end up in hospital, she said. It wasn't until 2014, about six months after the alleged rape, that Amelia filed a complaint with Bedfordshire Police, feeling that she finally had the strength and clarity to do so. But she found the experience extremely demoralising, she said. At the time, she had only recently accepted what had happened to her, after months of denial, was hugely traumatised and relied on a friend, a different person than the one she called after the alleged rape, to help speak on her behalf as a support person during the interview. At one stage, Amelia said, the investigating officer asked her friend whether Amelia had learning difficulties because she was struggling to speak. That made me feel so small, like, I can't even be emotional, Amelia recalled. I can't even feel how I'm feeling because you're trying to put me down. This perceived dismissive attitude, combined with her trauma and ongoing fear of Tate, left her feeling unable to pursue the complaint, and she instead opted to log it, recording the allegation with police to potentially pick up again when she felt stronger. Amelia focused on moving forward with her life, starting a new career and moving to a new town. But in 2015, she received a call out of the blue from an officer from a neighbouring police force, Hertfordshire Police. The officer told her the force was looking into complaints from two other women who had also made complaints of abuse, including one of rape, and another of repeatedly strangling a woman against Tate. Assertion of control through physical and sexual violence and asked whether Amelia would be happy with her complaint being included in that investigation. These are the two same women who went public with their experiences interviews with Vice World News. 
I literally broke down and went, yes, I am, recalled Amelia. I felt stronger. I felt like, okay, I'm not alone now. I've got two other girls. Amelia provided a video statement to police at the time and handed over her phone. It contained voice notes and messages from Tate, including, according to Amelia, the same messages and voice notes reviewed by Vice World News, which appeared to corroborate her account. These messages include an exchange that took place after the alleged sexual assault, and while they were still seeing each other, in which Tate wrote, I love raping you. Assertion of control through direct means, hoover, belittlement, invalidation. He wrote, and I love raping you and watching you let me while still debating if it's a good idea or not. Monsters are monsters. When you're under my control, I do whatever I please. Another exchange took place after Amelia stopped seeing him. Tate initiated it. Hoover, sending her an unsolicited video that showed him breaking a baseball bat on his shin and following it up with a voice note saying, I'm one of the most dangerous men on the planet. Sometimes you forget exactly how lucky you were to get fucked by me. Threat, grandiosity, Hoover. When Amelia responded by writing that she wouldn't call it lucky to have been strangled, pinned down and forced to do something, you knew I didn't want to do, Tate sent a voice note saying, am I a bad person? Because the more you didn't like it, the more I enjoyed it. Sadism, obvious enjoyment in devaluing behaviour. He followed up with a voice note asking if she would like him to pin you down and make you do things you didn't like, and another telling her, you didn't like that I was thinking I can do whatever I want to you. That's what it is. I'm the smartest person on this fucking planet. Once again, exhibiting grandiosity, absence of emotional empathy, sense of entitlement, and all doing so through a hoover. He then wrote, You were my whore when I had my hands on you, before admonishing her in a voice note for being upset about the alleged rape, belittlement, invalidation, insult. Are you seriously so offended I strangled you a little bit? You didn't fucking pass out. Chill the fuck out. Jesus Christ, I thought you were cool. What's wrong with you? Belittlement. Insult. Hoover. Hertfordshire Police confirmed to Vice World News that Amelia's complaint led to Tate being arrested on suspicion of rape in December 2015. The second time that year he was held, questioned, then released under investigation, following earlier complaints by the other two women. But despite the new allegation from Amelia being added to the investigation, the case moved slowly, and police did not pass the case file to the CPS, whose job involves assessing whether there is a realistic prospect of conviction, until 2019. In response to a new request for comment, Hertfordshire Police said in a statement that the investigation had passed through the hands of three separate officers in charge, OICs, during those four years. Investigations into sexual offences by their nature can be challenging and complex. Due to their lengthy nature, it can mean that investigations have more than one OIC. Said the statement, adding that the delays, that adding that despite the delays, the case was never closed. When a delay was identified, action was taken to progress the investigation as quickly as possible. Hertfordshire Police has previously acknowledged to Vice World News that it apologised to complainants over the delays in handling the case. In late 2019, Amelia was informed by the police that the CPS had finally reached a decision. She said she attended a meeting with a police officer who delivered the news that the CPS had declined to prosecute. I went to the police officer. Well, explain to me why you're letting a monster on the street, Amelia said. Amelia said the police officer even apologised for the decision and told her worse the effect of it's not that the police don't believe you, it's not that the CPS don't believe you, it's the fact that there's an ounce of doubt in the case. According to Amelia, the officer said the element of doubt related to the fact that she had had consensual sex with Tate in the wake of the alleged sexual assault, pointing out the observation that I made earlier that her continuing to have the relationship rather than obeying Goso had therefore stymied the prospect of bringing a prosecution against him. If she had understood what she was dealing with and applied the principle of get out, stay out, then that tainting of the evidence would not have occurred. In sexual assault cases, the CPS was only prepared to prosecute when it felt 100% confident of success, because a trial resulting in acquittal would only further traumatise the complainant. A friend of Amelia's, 
a different individual from either the one she called after she was raped or the one who initially accompanied her to talk to the police, she had brought along to the meeting as a support person, corroborated her account of the police's comments to Vice World News. Hertfordshire Police would not confirm the officer had made the comments, saying it would not comment on the specifics of an investigation. Amelia was left devastated by the decision, which she felt betrayed a lack of understanding of the psychology of abuse and of men like Tate, who, looking back, she said, exerted emotional control over her through his domineering and manipulative behaviour. Tate is facing similar allegations using physical violence and mental coercion to recruit and groom women into working for his sex webcam business in Romania. I was like, that's your excuse for the justice system, she recalled. So no one's been manipulated before. No one's had Stockholm Syndrome before. No one's been abused before. Experts in the field of sexual violence say that the fact that Amelia had consensually slept with Tate again after the alleged rape should not be viewed as somehow undermining her case, and the fact that it had been, was an indictment on the criminal justice system's handling of sexual assault cases. It shouldn't be seen as a weakness in the case, said London Metropolitan University's Vera Gray. She said due to the justice system's flawed approach to rape, which heavily scrutinised the actions of the accuser rather than the accused, the overwhelming majority of cases were never prosecuted because of how they would likely play out in court. Vera Gray said many rape complaints had encountered a similar response from police or prosecutors, being told we believe you, but something about your behaviour either prior to the assault or during or after makes us believe that a jury won't feel that they can convict without reasonable doubt. Due to enduring myths around rape, survivors had to meet impossible, often contradictory conditions in order to be seen as the perfect victim and for their complaints to be viewed as credible, she said. Andrea Simon, director of the End Violence Against Women Coalition, a UK-based group that has campaigned to improve how the justice system handles sexual violence cases, agreed. <clears throat> Excuse me. Rape myths and stereotypes inform every part of the criminal justice system and determine whether or not a victim's case progresses or is dropped, she told Vice World News. She said Amelia's story was appalling but unsurprising given all we know about how rape survivors are treated by the police and criminal justice system as a whole. In the wake of the 2019 decision by the CPS not to prosecute Tate, Amelia has focused on putting the sexual assault behind her, but Tate's rise to global fame has sent her recovery backwards. The online abuse of Tate's accusers by his army of supporters was hard to take. Since he has become famous, every day has been torture, she said. I'm like, are you joking? That's not supposed to happen. Someone that's abused you, hurt you, isn't then supposed to become world famous and then be in your face every day. Of course, if she understood what she was dealing with and the means by which she could counter that, the steps that she could actually take to lessen the impact of Tate's presence upon her. Like the two other women who filed complaints with police over Tate's alleged abuse, she feels that the failure of police and prosecutors to get justice in their case had allowed Tate to continue what now appears to be a clear pattern of misogynistic and abusive behaviour towards women, ultimately leading to his arrest in Romania last month. You know that he now has got a God complex, knowing that he can get away with any of this, she said. Well, in actual fact, he had that already as part of the arrogance and haughtiness of his narcissism, his lack of accountability, and this episode has merely emphasised and underlined to him that he believes that he's untouchable. Of course, not so much since he's currently festering in a Romanian jail. Tate's arrest in Romania and the decision by her fellow complainants to come forward publicly with their allegations have been the only positive developments since her ordeal began, she said, but made her hopeful that Tate would eventually be held accountable for his alleged abuse of women. Approach for comment on Amelia's allegations, Tate's lawyer said he was too busy dealing with the Romanian case against his client to respond to old allegations. Nullification of threat to control, dismissiveness. When reached subsequently by phone, he said he'd been too busy to reply to an email outlining the allegations and hung up when asked if he was planning to respond. Nullification of threat to control by dismissiveness. Tate, whose appeal against his ongoing detention was rejected by a judge in Bucharest, previously said that his relocation to Romania was motivated in part by a desire to escape a liberal post-hashtag MeToo Western society where men face greater accountability for sexual assault claims. This is probably 40% of the reason I moved to Romania, because in Eastern Europe none of this garbage flies, he said in one video clip. If you go to the police and say he raped me back in 1988, they'll say, well, you should have done something about it then. 
Bedfordshire Police said they were preparing a response, but had not provided any not provided one by the time of publication. Contacted for further comment regarding Amelia's allegations, the CPS said it had nothing to add to its previous statement to Vice World News regarding the investigation by Hertfordshire Police. That statement read that prosecutors had carefully reviewed all the evidence provided by the police regarding each complainant and concluded it did not meet our legal test and therefore there was no realistic prospect of a conviction. Accordingly, this article by Vice demonstrates some of the further behaviours that Tate engages in, which are driven by his narcissism. It would also, of course, be useful for those involved, both in terms of the police, those advising the victims and the victims themselves to understand that he's a narcissist and what that means with regard to the way that they should deal with him. Of course, once again, no mention of the fact that he's a narcissist is made in the article. This provides a useful opportunity to dissect his behaviours and help you understand the way that this particular upper lesser type B narcissist has behaved. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.